What is a what is a you, you run nonprofit? Uh, uh, nonprofits that succeed, do they get the bulk of their funding from government sources? So there are two t types of uh, government funding that nonprofits in the city and the state receive. There's competitive funding. Um, and Queen's Pride House receives basically only competitive funding. And then there's discretionary funding. Mm -hmm. Discretionary funding is at the discretion of a city council member, a member of the state legislature, a member of Congress. Now, that funding at the discretion of the elected official is often a source of real corruption. And I could point to specific cases, but essentially when politicians give money to uh, 501c3s, they're often looking for something. And sometimes they're painting just barely within the lines, uh, and it's tit for tat. There's a there's a quid pro quo, and sometimes it actually goes beyond uh, the realm of the legal. And we saw this in the case most flagrantly with Pedro Espada, uh, who is indicted and convicted, um, a politician from the Bronx, a Democrat from the Bronx. Uh, we've seen this time and again with. Um, the leadership in the uh, state legislature, uh, the speaker of the assembly, Sheldon Silver from Manhattan, the uh, last Senate majority leader, Dean Skelos, and uh, the temptation is simply too great. So discretionary funding and competitive funding. But even competitive funding is a little bit problematic in the way it's set up. Uh, nonprofits in this uh, city and in this state uh, can all compete for funding from various different types of organizations. Uh, one of the problems with LGBT organizations is they get so little of it. Do you know the percentage of funding from all sources, both government and private foundations, uh, that LGBT-specific organizations get in the US? It's one-tenth of one percent. Mm. So from the get-go, uh, LGBT-specific organizations uh, get only a teeny tiny fraction of the total amount of funding available through government sources and through private foundations. Uh, transgender specific organizations are only a teeny tiny fraction of that one tenth of one percent. I don't think anyone's actually even calculated it. It's so small. Uh, then when you look at the needs of LGBT people of color, LGBT immigrants, for example, um, which are constituencies that Queen's Pride House serves, um, at least half of our clients are people of color and or immigrants, uh, many of them very recent immigrants. Uh, the amount of funding available for those uh, populations is inadequate to the task at hand. Uh, there's also a tremendous amount of bureaucracy and red tape. I remember one city council member once offered Niagara, my organization, the New York Association for Gender Rights Advocacy, a small grant through uh, the Department of Youth and uh, Community Development. It was a very small grant, it was about $3,000. Um, I looked at the paperwork and ultimately decided not even to pursue it because the amount of paperwork was so mm. onerous in relation to this really small grant that it frankly was not worth it. So there's a whole bunch of impediments, there's a whole bunch of uh, structural impediments to LGBT organizations, especially those serving people of color, to get adequate funding. Then you throw in the fact that the discretionary funding is often um, with strings attached, uh, is often used or even manipulated by uh, elected officials. Like a string. Can you give me an example of a string? So, <laughs> to name names here, <laughs> my city council member, uh, Danny Drum, Daniel Drum, um, who has basically essentially put Queen's Pride House on a blacklist for discretionary funding because he has a vendetta against the organization and has basically warned other council members not to fund Queen's Pride House. Instead, he's diverted funding that would have gone to the only LGBT community center in the borough to other organizations to do LGBT uh, related work. Um, and uh, Make the Road New York is one recipient of his funding, his discretionary funding. Uh, even the Jewish Center of Jackson Heights, which has um, had a number of different LGBT events. And so discretionary funding can be used to reward friends and punish enemies. And it is, in fact, a potential source of corruption. 
non as a, my understanding of none, I've run a nonprofit for a long time, but it gets barely any funding. Uh, nonprofits are doing the task, are, are, are doing work that profit-making organizations wouldn't do because it's not going to make a profit, ergo that's the, they're important to the society that way. Yes. And then if you pick from among those nonprofits, the ones that will do your, be your handmaidens or in some way uh, uh, not rock the boat too much, those seems to be the, the choices. That's a really, well, what can I say, flies yeah. in the face of the reason for it being. There's some serious issues with the nonprofit industrial complex, as people call it, yes, that need further discussion.